rising over 2,000 feet above the surface of the Pacific Ocean is an island called Santa Catalina. It is home to a wide diversity of plants and animals. With remote coastlines and rugged hillsides, Catalina Island is a nature lover's paradise. The majority of this 21-mile long island is protected from development by the Santa Catalina Island Conservancy. The dynamic Pacific Ocean has had a major impact on the life of Catalina Island. Not only does the ocean influence the climate, it also determines which forms of life will colonize. Santa Catalina has never been attached to the mainland, so every living thing on the island had to cross at least 19 and a half miles of restless sea. For many forms of life, the ocean has been a barrier, but for others, it has been a highway. Five species of snakes and three species of lizards are native to Catalina. Rattlesnakes are the only poisonous snakes found on the island. Notice the deep pits on the front of the rattlesnake's face. These pits are sensitive to infrared radiation and are used to detect their warm-blooded prey. Large rainstorms on the mainland can wash reptiles down canyons and out to sea. Land snakes can float and even swim in the ocean. These snakes can be carried by ocean currents until they die or are washed up onto a landmass like Catalina Island. It is surprising that amphibians like the tree frog made their way to Catalina because they need fresh water to survive. Salt water will quickly dry out the skin of a tree frog. Tree frogs and salamanders must have floated to Catalina Island inside large moist logs or piles of plant debris. The native Catalina quail are poor flyers, so they too may have utilized floating plant debris to reach Catalina. Males and females are distinctly different. Males have a large plume on the head, while females are less colorful with a small plume. After arriving on the island, any new animal must either be pregnant or find a mate in order for their species to survive. Because of the isolation and unique living conditions provided by Catalina Island, many species of animals and plants actually change through the generations to become quite different from their original mainland relatives. Ground squirrels are native to the island. The Catalina ground squirrel and the Catalina quail are each larger and darker than their mainland relatives. These animals are different enough from their relatives to be considered separate subspecies. They are endemic to Catalina, which means they are found in their natural state only on Catalina Island. The Catalina fox is endemic to the island. It's about the size of a house cat. There is debate as to how this animal actually made it to Catalina. Did it raft over, or was it brought as a pet by native islanders? It is closely related to foxes found on other Channel Islands, and is distantly related to gray foxes found on the mainland. Through time, the Catalina fox has changed and is different enough from all other foxes to be considered a separate subspecies. You will not find this exact kind of fox anyplace else in the world. Bison were brought to Catalina by man in 1924 for the making of a movie. Those original animals were left on the island. Additional bison were brought over later to enhance the breeding capabilities of the herd. These animals roam freely over Catalina and have become an island tourist attraction. At certain times of the year, male bison challenge each other with roaring noises.
Because bison are non-native animals, their numbers are controlled by the conservancy so that they do not overgraze on the native plants. Bison are periodically rounded up like cattle and shipped off the island. The native plants of Catalina are the basic component upon which nearly all island life depends. They provide food and habitat for numerous insects and animals. Only a percentage of the thousands of plant species found on the mainland made it to Catalina. Seeds from plants must be blown by the wind, carried by animals, or must float across the ocean to colonize the island. But we find a surprising diversity of plant types. Around 400 species of plants are native, and of these, at least eight are endemic exclusively to Catalina Island. Catalina is a unique environment for the growth of plants. Its rugged mountains, surrounded by ocean, provide numerous microclimates. Woodlands and chaparral grow on moist north-facing slopes. Large oak trees can grow in deep canyons. The acorns on the oaks were an important food source for Catalina's native islanders. Cactus and other drought-adapted plants grow on parched south-facing slopes. The choya cactus, found on parts of the island, is a plant common to Baja, California. One of the most unique plants on Catalina Island is the endemic Catalina ironwood tree. Groves of these trees occur on many of the island's north-facing slopes. You will not find this tree growing naturally anywhere else in the world. We do find fossil records on the mainland indicating that millions of years ago when the world's climate was different, these ironwood trees were common. Somehow they made it to the island before dying off on the mainland. Most of the plants on Catalina are adapted to droughts because for most of the year, Catalina is a very dry island. but winter rains can quickly transform the scenery. Green plants shoot up, and trickling streams turn into powerful, muddy waters. One large storm in the winter of 1995 brought enormous amounts of water to the campus at Toyon Bay. After the rains stop, green plants and wildflowers burst out towards the sunlight. The land is just one part of Catalina's beauty. The ocean waters around Catalina Island are teeming with life. Pods of dolphins are often seen swimming the offshore waters. They like to feed on schools of squid or on small fish like anchovies and sardines. Birds also enjoy the fish buffet provided by Catalina's waters. When you see a wild frenzy of birds diving into the water, you can be certain that there are bait fish below. From the surface, it literally looks like the water is boiling with fish. Fishermen call this a bait ball or a boil. This dense school of anchovies is being driven to the surface by larger fish, the Pacific mackerel. 
Swimming in a tight ball is a form of protection for the anchovies, but even this cannot protect them from the mouths of the predatory fish. All the sparkling flecks in the water are scales from anchovies that have been eaten. Giant kelp plants sometimes break away from the shoreline to drift out in the open ocean. Schools of small fish seek protection under the blades of the kelp. Larger fish, like the yellowtail, are often attracted to the schools of fish. Another visitor to the kelp rafts is this bizarre fish called the mola mola, or ocean sunfish. Molas can grow to immense sizes of up to 10 feet and 3,000 pounds. Blue sharks cruise Catalina's offshore waters. These sharks can grow to be 12 and a half feet long. Divers sometimes lure them to the surface with dead fish. Blue sharks are typically not aggressive towards people because their preferred foods are fish and squid. But divers do risk getting bit when they swim in waters filled with the oils from dead fish. Watch the eye of this shark. Blue sharks can protect their eyes with special eyelids called nictitating membranes. Do blue sharks attack sea lions? No, in fact, sea lions sometimes tease blue sharks. Schools of squid move into Catalina's nearshore waters at certain times of the year. They gather together to mate and lay eggs. Frantic males grab at the females. The arms of a male usually turn red when he pursues and mates with a female. Females anchor packets of eggs to the sand. Each one of these long egg fingers may contain hundreds of eggs. After mating and laying their eggs, the squid die. Babies hatch out of the egg fingers in three to five weeks. These young squids swim off to unknown depths where they live for just one year before returning to mate and lay new eggs. Large numbers of lobsters sometimes congregate around certain areas of Catalina Island. These animals normally hide in the rocks for protection but at certain times of the year, they can be found huddled together out in open sandy areas. These are California spiny lobsters and they have no claws. For protection, they have sharp spines all over their outer shell or exoskeleton. Their antennae are armed with sharp spines and they effectively wave these about to ward off intruders. At certain times of the year, a female will carry thousands of eggs under her tail. When the larvae hatch, they are released into the ocean currents to drift as plankton until they're old enough to settle out to the bottom and find a home. A lobster swims backwards by forcefully flipping its tail. Many animals spend their lives living in the sand. During the daytime, sandy ocean environments can look like deserts, but at night they come alive with animals. Swimming crabs come out at night to scavenge for food. When threatened, they retreat back into the sand. Fragile heart urchins cruise the surface of the sand at night. The thornback swims over the sand in search of food. This ray-like fish has the ability to detect the electrical impulses of animals buried in the sand.
Cusk eels are also active at night. They can dig back into the sand tail first. Halibut live on the sand. A halibut can change the color on its back to match what it is laying on. It is not only hiding from predators, but is waiting for unsuspecting animals to go by, then it will lunge out to eat them. Leopard sharks sometimes school in shallow Catalina waters. These beautiful sharks are not aggressive. In fact, they are usually very skittish around divers. Leopard sharks can grow to lengths of seven feet. They eat a wide variety of fishes and invertebrates. It is easy for divers to find horn sharks. These docile fish usually rest in the rocks during the day. Horn sharks are small, only growing to a little over three and a half feet in length. The two-spot octopus is normally found hiding in the rocks, but it will occasionally venture out to open sandy areas. It can swim by shooting a jet of water out through its siphon, which is a tube by its head. An octopus is a master of disguise. It can change the colors and texture of its body to blend into its environment. It is much easier for the octopus to hide in the rocks than it is for it to hide on top of the sand. But there are dangers for the octopus in the rocks. Moray eels eat octopuses. A moray can grab a slippery octopus with its many sharp teeth. Divers sometimes lure moray eels out of the rocks with bait like anchovies or squid. But they must be careful because when an eel bites it hangs on. A moray can rip up fingers if the diver is not careful. Notice that even on the roof of its mouth, the eel has many rows of sharp teeth that angle backwards. But when a mora eel sits in the rocks, opening and closing its mouth, it is not trying to be aggressive, it is simply pumping water to its gills for oxygen. Another animal that lives in the rocks is the spiny sea urchin. It and its relative the bat star are both invertebrates, animals without backbones. A garden of underwater plants often cover the nearshore rocks of Catalina Island. These algae plants grow in a variety of colors, including purple. As well as providing oxygen and food for the animals in the sea, these algae plants are an important hiding place. Here, a kelp crab makes a meal out of its hiding place. This alga is called giant kelp. It can grow from depths of over 100 feet. Air bladders help to float parts of these huge plants towards the surface where they collect sunlight. All plants, even those in the water, need the energy that our sun provides. In good conditions, giant kelp can grow up to two feet per day. These algae grow to be so large that they look like underwater forests. Dense kelp forests are home for a variety of fishes and invertebrates. Schools of fish, like these silvery blue half moons, seek protection in the shadows of the kelp forest. 
aggressive kelp bass seek not only protection, but food. Their big mouths are perfectly adapted for eating other smaller fish. The bright orange Garibaldi is the official California State Marine fish and is protected by law. There is a $500 fine if you take one of these without a permit. When they are young, Garibaldi have iridescent blue spots on their bodies. Bat rays sometimes cruise the kelp forest. These graceful rays are related to sharks because they both have skeletons made of cartilage. A bat ray can live to at least 24 years of age and can grow to have a fin span of up to six feet. Bat rays often rest on the sandy bottom. They dig in the sand for their food, which are clams, crabs, and worms. Another animal that makes the kelp forest its home is the harbor seal. These animals are typically curious, but very shy. Sometimes divers encounter young seals that have not yet learned to be afraid of people. seals are air-breathing mammals. They can't stay underwater all of the time. They must go to the surface periodically to breathe. Their nostrils are closed when they are relaxed. When underwater, they do not have to think about holding their breath. When a harbor seal goes to the surface, it consciously opens its nostrils for air. Harbor seals scan the shoreline with their eyes before crawling out to rest and warm up in the sun. If it is safe, they scoot up onto land like big fat worms. Their fore flippers are short and stubby. They cannot crawl on their flippers the way a sea lion does. During springtime on Catalina Island, hundreds of harbor seals haul out on remote beaches to give birth to pups. Another, more noisy marine mammal also crawls out on Catalina rocks and beaches. Sea lions sun themselves on an isolated rock.
Underwater, sea lions tend to be more aggressive than their shy relatives, the harbor seals. Here, a group of playful sea lions put on a show for the camera. Notice the heart-shaped blow from this whale. That blow is characteristic of a gray whale. Gray whales swim past Catalina Island every year. They spend their summers feeding in Alaska. In fall, these large mammals begin their migration south to the warm waters of Baja, California, where they mate and give birth to their young. A baby gray whale is 15 feet long when it is first born. After mating and birthing, gray whales start the return swim to Alaska. These incredible animals swim day and night, covering a distance of 100 miles per day. Some swim right along the outside edge of Catalina kelp forests. During the swim to Baja and back, these whales will travel up to 14,000 miles, and they do this year after year. Gray whales and their relatives, the humpback whales, migrate farther than any other mammal on Earth. Here is another type of mammal that frequents the ocean waters, snorkelers. These mammals are not quite as graceful as whales and seals. Man has utilized the waters and lands of Santa Catalina for many years. Long before modern man, native islanders inhabited the island. The ocean was an extremely important food source for these people. We find large numbers of snail shells, fish bones, and even marine mammal bones in their ancient trash dumps or middens. It appears that they may have overfished some parts of Catalina, but their numbers were so low that nature could always bounce back. Through the years, Santa Catalina Island has had many different owners and has seen many different uses. Ranching, mining, movie making, and even smuggling have occurred on Catalina. One of the latest families to own the entire island were the Wrigleys of chewing gum fame. Their island mansion sits above the town of Avalon and is now a bed and breakfast inn. William Wrigley Jr. originally bought the island with development in mind. But the Wrigleys appreciated the beauty of Catalina and did not want to see it destroyed. So in the 1970s, they created the Santa Catalina Island Conservancy and donated 86% of the island to this non-profit organization. The Conservancy is dedicated to restoring and protecting the natural resources of Santa Catalina. So development is limited. Around 3,700 people live on Catalina, and most of those live in the town of Avalon. The main business of Avalon is tourism. Close to a million people come each year to enjoy this island resort. As you travel north along the coast, away from Avalon, you will discover various yacht clubs and camps operating out of the coves. The Catalina Island Marine Institute runs science camps out of Toyon Bay, while the YMCA, Boy Scouts, and various church groups run camps out of other coves. A narrow portion of the island called the Isthmus is home for a small community of people. Here the island is only one half mile wide. The Two Harbors Isthmus area is a popular destination for yachters. The waters around Catalina Island can be beautifully calm for boating, but winds blowing across the ocean can quickly kick up large waves. These boats are tied up at Toyon Bay. This is normally a safe, protected place for boats, but when Santa Ana winds blow, the waves roll in and anything can happen.
the seas can calm down as quickly as they kicked up. This shot, taken just two hours later, shows a calm Toyon Bay. Amazingly, this boat was washed up on the rocks and did not sustain much damage. Man has had profound effects on the ocean and land environments of Santa Catalina Island. The most damaging actions were the introduction of non-native animals. For over 100 years, introduced animals have been overgrazing on the island. Records show that in the mid-1800s, 20,000 sheep and 15,000 goats ran wild on the island. A major cattle ranching operation existed on Catalina well into the mid-1900s. In addition, deer, pigs, and blackbuck antelope were introduced to the island by man. There are no native predators to control their numbers, so introduced animals can quickly overpopulate. Pigs use their powerful snouts to plow into the ground. As they dig around trees, soil erodes away. The soil around these Catalina cherry trees is so eroded that the roots are exposed. Eventually, the roots will not be able to hang on anymore, and the trees will fall over. Catalina hillsides are littered with trees killed by erosion. When the trees disappear, the hillsides are covered only with grasses. And eventually, even the grasses cannot hang on. There are large sections of Catalina which are so overgrazed that nothing grows on them anymore. As entire communities of plants disappear, the insects and animals that depend on the plants will also disappear. It is important to protect the native plants of Catalina because they keep native animals alive. Introduced animals like goats, deer, and pigs can decimate hillsides so badly that even cactus cannot grow. But people are working to protect and restore the native life of Catalina. The Santa Catalina Island Conservancy has begun the process of eliminating introduced animals like goats and pigs from the island and amazing things are happening. Here is a grove of rare endemic ironwood trees that were nearly destroyed by overgrazing. By the early 1990s, most of the trees from this grove had already died, and most of the valuable topsoil that these trees were clinging to was gone. There was no new growth in the grove. In fact, just about everything from this entire hillside was destroyed by the introduced animals. The actions of man had turned this portion of the island into a desert. But after the elimination of goats from this section of the island, the grove is making an astounding comeback. Shoots are sprouting up from the bases of the old trees. There are even some new ironwood starting to grow separate from the grove. A new generation of plants is growing up with a new generation of islanders. The waters around Catalina are important to consider also, and the threats to these waters come not only from the island itself. Less than 20 miles away is a huge population of people. Pollution travels by sea and by air to Catalina Island. Tests done on local bottlenose dolphins show that these animals have unusually high levels of man-made toxins in their bodies. Certain fish are less abundant around Catalina than they used to be. In the 1800s, Catalina Island was famous for its leaping tuna. Large tuna were so abundant in the ocean that they were often seen leaping out of the water in pursuit of flying fish. Catalina Island was considered a spawning ground for vast numbers and varieties of fishes. Tuna are now rarely seen in Catalina waters. 
Small fish are also taken from Catalina each year to be sold in aquarium stores. Some people are currently working to increase the number of marine preserves on Catalina Island. Maybe we should leave this small portion of California untouched for future generations. The numbers of animals can rebound if they are given a chance. Giant black sea bass are enormous fish which used to be common in Catalina waters. Growing to sizes larger than tropical groupers, black sea bass can attain lengths of over seven feet and can weigh more than 500 pounds. These impressive fish can swim very fast over short distances and will routinely chase down a tuna-like fish called the bonita. Due to severe overfishing, populations of black sea bass are extremely low. So the taking of these fish by sport fishermen was banned by law in 1982. Free divers now find sport in tagging rather than killing these animals. Here is a tagged black sea bass that was encountered on a night scuba dive off Catalina. It was unusually docile and allowed the diver to examine its tag. Tagging may allow us to learn more about these animals. We already know that black sea bass can live to over 75 years of age. Divers around Catalina Island have recently been seeing not only adult black sea bass, but even some tiny bright orange juvenile sea bass. It would be nice if this incredible fish could continue to live for the next 75 years and grow from 2 inches to a length of 7 feet. When a plant or animal goes extinct, it disappears from our planet Earth forever. Extinctions are not just occurring in exotic places like rainforests. Some of the plants and animals of Catalina may go extinct if we are not careful. If conservation efforts succeed in restoring Santa Catalina Island to its natural state, we must never allow the public to forget Catalina history. Because if we forget past abuses of Catalina Island, history is bound to repeat itself. Santa Catalina Island is an isolated testing ground. The problems on this small island eventually become obvious. We have learned what happens when man carelessly upsets natural balances. But Santa Catalina Island still abounds with life and natural beauty. This island still supports unique plants and animals, and many things are still found in abundance. The isolation of Catalina has helped to protect it. But the future is not guaranteed. Your actions will have an effect on the survival of Catalina Island and other places like it.